All right, so here we are in front of the uh, elephants. And the cool thing about these guys is that, is that they have really, really, really long um, fronts, and that's that's cool. And that's pretty much all there is to say. So it's been six months since I started this channel, and as I get more familiar with YouTube, I realize that a whole new genre is on the rise. If you've seen the film in its entirety, and you should, I wouldn't blame you if you never understood what was going on. It's designed that way. On the internet, the video essay has been around for many years. Did you know that every time you flip on a radio to a static station, you're hearing remnants from the Big Bang? But 2016 really gave us an onslaught of supercuts, Recuts. Thanks, he's an elf. I'm sorry, what? Personal reviews. But for me, the big short takes on the most difficult story that any Hollywood movie. Scene breakdowns. Specifically, I want to look at how Hitchcock blocks this scene. And analyses. We're alerted to the possible split by the visual split between Ava and her reflection. The video essay is still kind of a niche genre, perhaps because most of them are a form of film criticism. But I think 2017 might just be the year where that's going to change. We have people coming into our country that are looking to do tremendous There are going to be tons more Nerdwriter episodes in 2017, so... Because content creators are starting to make real money with video essays. A top-notch video essay artist who pops out constantly good content can make YouTube money through advertising at around 2 to 5 bucks per 1,000 monetized views. In addition, many essayists develop a loyal following of patrons who volunteer to pay a few bucks for each video upload. That can lead to 3500 per video or more. I'd like to say thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. Finally, content creators can earn even more with sponsorships. According to one successful YouTuber, that deal can run anywhere between $15 to $35 per thousand views. 2017 is going to be a huge year for the video essay, but I'm not so sure it's about money, or at least not yet. I think it might be about digital literacy, the, the widespread ease of reading and writing in the video essay form. I think people are making video essays for the same reasons they might have written novels or political essays or poetry. We're making them because we have something to say. Dear Jane, we preferred using a photograph of you in Vietnam instead of photographs from the film. We found this photograph in an issue of L'Express early in August 1972. So what makes a video essay any good? Let's look at the components. Long before the internet, we had cinematic essays, often part documentary, fiction and experimental film. Just like today's, they would explore topics in a subjective and or poetic manner. Peter Thompson broke it down in his lecture notes, which I'll link to in the video description. I'm going to focus in on just three. Whenever there's a sentence where the audience already knows how he's going to finish this thought. Feeling crispy, fresh, ready to... He's going to cut it off. Unlike a traditional film with a dramatic arc, video essays explore or meditate just on a theme. In the traditional sense, that would be a mistake. But he does that quite frequently, and it's working. Number two. They tend to be modular and run the risk of lacking stakes. Because if you just present a list, well, that can be boring. Admittedly, I use lists a lot when maybe I shouldn't, because... Video essays aren't essays. They're films. So you want to structure and pace them like a filmmaker would. Tony's essays from Every Frame a Painting are everything but boring. Even though this movie is an essay, each moment has the connective logic of a South Park episode. What should happen between every beat that you've written down is either the word 
therefore, or but, right? So this happens. What are those? My pubes. What? I got it from Scott Tenerman. And therefore, this happens. Hartman, you don't buy pubes, you grow them yourself. You're telling me these pubes are worth nothing. Yeah. But this happens. And I'll give you the pubes. Sweet. Therefore, this happens. Ah, God damn it! <laughs> you have to see his video. I'll include a link in the video description. Video essays also tend to be different from tutorials. They're less concerned with how to and more with why to. Why do Marvel's movies all look like muddy concrete? Like, look at that. It's a great scene, but that's really ugly. Number two, suspension of belief. This might be a tricky one to wrap your head around, but you might have heard the term suspension of disbelief. Superman can fly, you accept that willingly and thus get a chance to enjoy the film. Now in a video essay, we're doing the opposite. We now would question why Superman can fly. Simple answer, because the writer made it up. But there are many questions where the answer is far more interesting. Do you mind if I use it though? Donald's fictitious credit matters because it is essential to make sense of the film, especially its final act. The film we are watching being written is the film we are watching. And a video essay aims to provide answers and thus empowers you with the insights. Lastly, video essays tend to be self-critic or self-reflect. The Karate Kid is the story of Daniel, a violent sociopath who moves to a California town and begins tormenting a local boy and his friends. A video essay really represents a personal opinion. It challenges the viewer to connect with it. And I really think that's the best part, as video essays are a way to find and connect with people that agree with you or disagree. May you choke on it in your wet dreams, you rotten little prick. Okay. Quentin Tarantino is a master filmmaker. Dad. Good video essays work when they cover interesting themes, are well told and provide value to their audience. I actually recently made a part of my advanced editing class I teach at a film college. He is a consummate student of all kinds of movies, yet he has never attended film school. What makes him tick? Two students were gained to be featured in this video. Ed talks about his passion for Quentin Tarantino and shares what he learns from him rather than film school. All of a sudden, the whole mystical shamanistic thing that I thought directing was just went boop, and I realized I could do that. Hi, this is Ben Afshin, and I want to talk to you about something I love, animation. Ben talks about his passion for the cartoon Gravity Falls. This is how to effectively break the fourth wall and be super meta in cartoon animation. You can watch full-length versions of their video essays by clicking on the links in the show notes below. I highly recommend that you check them out because I actually learned from them both. And I know they will benefit from your feedback on their first video essay. No money means no animation! It's so shocking and surprising when it hits us that it has a tremendous impact on us while watching. And that's the great thing about video essays. They make us rethink something that we thought we already understood. Think we made enough? Talk at the animation bar! In 2017, I'm certainly gonna do more of these video essays because I find them quite fascinating. Let me know what you think about this format. Do you enjoy watching them? If so, hit that subscribe button and hopefully I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.